By the time you're done watching this video, you're going to have a greater awareness of how people communicate, how they influence and even manipulate one another. Uh, you'll have a better understanding of how you can not manipulate other people or influence other people in ways that you may not want to, and more importantly, how you can avoid being uh, influenced or manipulated by um, the way other people use the musicality of their communication or how they modulate their communication using some of the elements of music. So I'm going to get into that as we go on. I'm Kalani Das, music therapist, and this is part of our music mindfulness series uh, through World Drum Club and through patreon.com slash Kalani. So welcome. The idea in this video is to identify a few different ways that we all, myself included, change the music or musicality of our communication to influence others and even manipulate them. So what specifically am I talking about? Well, I want to go back and just identify a couple ways that drums and percussion instruments and music have been used throughout history uh, by asking you the question, how have drums been used in battle throughout time, right? You've probably seen pictures uh, or maybe seen movies where large drums are being used uh, as people head into battle. And I want to ask you why. We know that drums and percussion have been used in battles, but have you ever thought about why? What's the reason? There's got to be a reason, right? You're not just out there having fun playing music. It's a battle. It's serious. It's life or death. So what's the purpose? Well, you can think about that, but I want to give you a couple reasons that we all can agree on, I'm sure. And one is that it organizes people, right? If you think about marching into battle, soldiers, they're aligned, they're organized. More importantly, perhaps, it motivates people to keep going. You know, once you're getting aligned with the rhythm, you don't stop. And the drummers are there, in many cases, to keep the troops moving forward into battle. Imagine if they didn't have that music uh, and you just said, oh, just go ahead and, you know, whenever you're ready, just go, just go up and fight. <laughs> Uh, it works a lot better if you're trying to motiv motivate people to move forward, especially into dangerous situations if you're beating the drum, right? And we can think of metaphors and analogies to that. There's a flip side to that, too. And that is to, well, just imagine if, you, if you're in the front lines and you saw what is often reported that the, the Huns did, right, which is ride elephants with these big kettle drums on each side. Those were called nakers. Uh, and you see people just beating these giant drums. Doom, doom, doom. And, it's on, and they're on top of elephants. How would you feel? All right? So it's a matter of intimidating your opponent. And that's, so now we're at the stage of where's the musicality come in to our own communication styles? What do we do that's kind of like the equivalent of that? in our own battles, our own conversations or arguments. So you can probably already imagine where I'm heading with this. And that is that we, we bring our own drums in a way. What we do is, of course, we modulate our voices and we become louder and possibly more rhythmic. Uh, and we do the same thing in our communication, which is a musical treatment, right? We're, we're speaking normally and then we're yelling, we're beating that drum, we are raising our volume. And it's really the equivalent of what drums and trumpets and, bra you know, these brass instruments would do for one team or one side, which is to intimidate or overpower uh, the other side. And of course, you know this, right? So let's think about why we do that. Well, it's, it's a tactic. Um, the idea of of uh, raising your volume and therefore seeming bigger, uh, maybe intimidating the other person uh, through, through dynamics, basically, sometimes through accenting what we're saying, uh, but often just through sheer volume. And we, we've all done this. The question is, uh, what can we do to avoid being influenced or manipulated by that? And what can we do to avoid doing that to other people? 
because that is, it's a tactic. Um, adding volume to what you're saying doesn't change what you're saying, right? It doesn't change the message. If you have a point to make, you can make it at a lower volume. In fact, if you start yelling, it makes it seem like you don't have a good point because why would you be yelling? Why would you be trying to use a tactic like raising your volume, which is an intimidation tactic, uh, if you did have a good point and vice versa? So the purpose of this talk right now is to help you become more aware of when you might be using that tactic on other people and when other people start to use that tactic on you, what do you do? Now, usually, and I think you'll all agree with this, what we, ha what we do, and this is another musical response, what we often do is we match or, or kind of synchronize to the energy of another person. So if somebody starts yelling at you, what do you do? You often will just automatically, and this is the kind of unconscious or, un, or non-mindful response, is you just yell back. You get caught into this you know, upward spiral or escalation of increasing your volume and you end up in a yelling match, right? So this is really big, you guys. This is important. When a situation occurs and let's say somebody starts yelling uh, or they just start off yelling, whether it's gradual or sudden, what's going to be your choice in that moment? And for you, because all you can control is you, right? You can only control your side of it, your response. So you have to decide, how am I going to proceed from here? Am, am I going to start beating my own drums and, and <laughs> trumpets? Am I going to use this tactic and join in with this volume escalation, get into a shouting match with people? Or is there a better way? If I have a point to make, if I'm actually trying to communicate information, uh, I can still do that. I don't have to join in with the shouting and the yelling um, and thereby kind of escalating things into more of a visceral, unconscious battle right, with another person. If somebody starts yelling at you, you can, you can just remember that that's a tactic. It doesn't change, you know, getting louder doesn't change the message. So if somebody has a point to make, you know, saying it louder doesn't change that, right? It might feel like they're winning. I mean, the point is when people start yelling, they often just want to win the argument, right? They want you to back down. That's why people throw tantrums. That's why people start yelling. They might even do something physical, right? And those are all extremely low level tactics, but that's tactics that we all use. We're all human and they work to, to some degree. So our challenge and, you know, the, what I see is really evolving and moving to the next or higher level. You can use any word you want there. Next, higher level of beingness and communication is to not, not escalate, uh, not change the music of our, of our communication um, just because it's a intimidation tactic, but to stay focused, stay on, you know, stay on the message, communicate with kindness, communicate, you know, in your own way, that's true to you and your goals and intentions, regardless of what the other person is doing and thereby probably de-escalating. So just getting back to the music mindfulness, you don't have to match the energy of, of other people, of other musicians in the ensemble. You could actually pull the other direction. You could calm, reduce, slow down, change the music of the communication, and thereby change the outcome, change the feeling. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about the feeling of the interaction, the feeling of the communication, and it's about you uh, modeling whatever it is that reflects your values, representing yourself uh, and your values. For me, it has to do with community, has to do with peace, kindness, kindfulness. But in order to get there, I need to exercise this music mindfulness and this lesson, okay? 
that's what I have for you. I hope you can engage this idea in your own practice. We're all practicing, we're all doing the best we can, and that's also something that we need to remember, that everybody out there is doing the best they can. So I hope we can all do better. I'm Kalani Das. Thanks for watching.